live on a very special episode. Maybe a farewell episode in sorts. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a little bit of that. In a way, yeah, in a way. You know, we're just transitioning to a different style. We're, pi we're pivoting. Okay. okay. It's, yeah, a, yeah, it's, a be, it's a be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The, uh, the, yeah, yeah, the show is going to be, uh, it's going to continue to live on, but it's going to continue to live on on YouTube as opposed to a, um, a standard uh, Zoom call. Okay. So now you'll have the option to view it at your own time. Uh, baseball, baseball, uh, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Okay, yep. let's see. So some quick housekeeping, guys. Uh, just make sure that you are muted and that your video is turned off, please. It looks like everyone does have it uh, like that, so I appreciate it. Uh, but just for future reference. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is Mindshare Monday 17. Yep. And uh, it's the competitive advantage of small business certifications. We have our special guest here, Jermaine Farms. He's going to give you a little introduction of who he is in a little bit. Um, but yeah. This is going to be our last Mindshare Monday. In this format, in this format. In, yep, in this format, uh, we're transitioning to YouTube. And yep. at the end of this presentation, uh, you will get a link where you could sign up to our newsletter to get more information about it. Yeah. So let's get started. All right, Happy so Mindshare your host, Monday, guys. Yep, yep, so <laughs> I, hope, I hope everyone already knows who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's I'm Chris you could call me Chris please don't call me the full thing Christian it's way too long <laughs> um, yeah. marketing director at the New Jersey Small Business Development Center yeah um, and Ryan yeah we're uh, you know we've grown close over the past couple of weeks so you can call me Big Rye you know it doesn't have to be the <laughs> okay, I've never name, heard you know, that exactly. before <laughs> Uh, yep. So Ryan, uh, finance consultant, or just, you know, um, it seems almost uh, for the past couple of years, it's been developing into more of an everything consultant. Um, yeah. But I don't know everything, you know, nobody knows everything. So I have to work with people like Jermaine, when uh, questions come into an area that's a little outside my expertise. And uh, I, over the past, you know, for so many years, I've been constantly bugging Jermaine. I'm like, Jay, Jermaine, I have another question. How do I answer it? Can you help me out? And uh, he's been a, a crucial part of our team. So I'm really glad that he's here with us today. Absolutely. And with that, you know, our special guest. Yeah. Thank you guys uh, for having me. It, it truly is about partnership and, and working together. That's that's how we go about our business community. Um, we have so many uh, partners in, in different places from uh, internally here, economic development to the colleges, uh, working with you guys, uh, my counterparts in other counties, uh, Bergen County, Essex County, for sure. Uh, Mercer, Middlesex, uh, but partnership is is the way we get stuff done. Uh, Raul uh, Mercado over at the PTAC, um, you know, and, and forgive me who, for whoever I may be leaving out, but uh, us working together is 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 crucial, and, and especially now at a critical time where uh, businesses that we might have spoke to maybe 90 to 120 days ago, we don't know if, if they're, they're even still around, so. Yeah. Uh, us working together is is uh, you know definitely factor number one uh, for helping the communities we serve. But thank you, uh, gentlemen, and, and uh, you know the SBDC for always uh, working with us here in Hudson County, uh, working with us to help the local business community. Uh, you know, fortunate here that we have great leadership. Our collective leadership here works together and enables us to to help the public as well. But thank you for having me as a guest and always count on this uh, office uh, to be a participant and help any way we can. Thank yeah, you. And, and thank you for accepting the invitation. And something you said is, is, is hitting the nail right on the head. It's access to information, I think, can sometimes make or break a business. And understanding how to do something and you know, understanding that even there as an option for us can really save our business or, or grow our business to the next level. And, that, and that's where that team effort that you were talking about really goes into place because, you know, we each have a specialty. You know, I don't go to a one to one doctor to fix all my problems, you know. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, so let's, uh, uh, let's. What I did not say. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the, 
I've, I've never met on this broadcast. And, and thank you, everyone that is, that is joining us. Thank you for making a value-based decision to, to uh, give us your valuable time as we cover this information. Uh, my name is Jermaine Parms. I'm fortunate enough to be director of Hudson County's Office of Business Opportunity. Uh, you know, it's, it's great being here. I'm from Hudson County, originally born and raised here. Uh, so it's a fantastic opportunity to work with great people uh, from our collective leadership to the staff internally here at HCOBO uh, and work with, again, strategic partners like yourselves uh, just to help and, and pitch in as much as we can. And if you can, in, in one sentence, what does the uh, County Office of Business Opportunity, uh, what does it do? What is it? One sense, one sense is, is tricky, but I'll try. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get more into it in, in a minute, but, you know, to give guys, you know, a teaser. You know what? It, it, I'll say it this way. Um, if I could right. take it this way, we are almost, in effect, a Swiss army knife for connecting to opportunities. Love it, love it. So we'll find out what that means in a minute. If I could articulate it that way, um, I think trying to to say it in one manner uh, discredits it does. Uh, it does the office. So I think if I could articulate it that way, I, I would I would go with that. I like that, and I, I like that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do a deep yeah. dive into what that means in a minute. Awesome, All awesome. Right. So let's get into headlines really quick. Yeah. Let's see. So officials announced August 10 launch date for small business rental assistance program. Yeah. Um, so I, I even got some of my clients who were interested in this and I think yep. it's very important. So, yeah, so we've got a lot of questions about, uh, I can't pay certain bills and for whatever reason, I either messed the deadline or didn't uh, participate in the PPP or the EIDL to help me with my overhead of my rent. You know, what other programs, you know, exist to help me out and, um, here, this is a brand new article that just came out a couple of days ago, and it's talking about a program that's going to be launching soon. I think the date, where is, uh, where is it the, the date there? August 10th. August 10th, yep, August 10th. And uh, just as it, it does, uh, as it says, it's going to be a program that will assist you with, uh, with, with your rent. There's a lot yep. of businesses that still haven't been able to operate back at the capacity that they used to. So how can they still maintain a you know, certain overhead when the, uh, the income isn't there as it, as it used to be? You know, they're still trying to pivot their business. Right. Yeah, right. it's critical. Um, businesses yeah. need help from any which way it can come from, from yep. uh, any type of fiscal uh, to finding contract opportunities to anything that saves them uh, any type of dollar, you know, any resource that can save uh, any type of money is, is definitely going to be helpful. Um, again, you know, and I know you've, you've seen it on your end and I just, uh, spoke with my, my counterparts in the other counties, probably, I think maybe a week ago, uh, talking about some of these items. Businesses, you know, there's some businesses, 90 to 120 days, we don't know now if they're even still open. Yeah. So, you know, we're emailing businesses and we're calling and there's, you know, there's nothing on the other end. And, and you know, these businesses are, are really in survival mode. Yeah, they, they are. They are. And uh, something that I'm noticing, I'm, I'm not sure how much you've seen it on your side, Jermaine, but uh, uh, the expense of uh, pivoting their business and buying all this PP&E um, you know, materials, uh, it's, it's that break even point just got pushed out a little bit further out because they have to recuperate that investment into their business in order to survive in this current structure. And that's right. adding to their expenses and stuff like this comes, you know, with uh, at a good time. So take advantage, guys. You know, there's, uh, you, know, re, you know, the link is always going to be available after the workshop, uh, yep. after the seminar. So you guys can, you know, read at, at leisure. If you guys have questions, call us, call Jermaine, and we'll go into it uh, a little bit more specifically with you guys. Yep, yep. Everyone's going to get a, a recording, a link to the recording, and yep. um, a link to this presentation here. So um, you'll have access to it. So now for this second link here. Big names who filed bankruptcy. Um, yeah. yeah, we chose this just just so people can see opportunities, right? Exactly, exactly. So more of a, of a strategy. So uh, Jermaine, if you you know if you want to chime in, but this is more of now there are some vacancies that are happening or some businesses that are not going to because uh, when you file bankruptcy, it doesn't mean the company automatically closes. You know, it just depends on the chapter of bankruptcy that you have, uh, but they might not be uh back to their normal strength right away you know or they might uh reinvent themselves in, in some way you know they might you know uh, uh level back a, a, a little bit so it just it, bottom line it creates opportunity there there is a void there's a gap 
And then how can I position my business to fill that gap and take advantage of this, uh, of this void in our marketplace? And these are a couple of big companies that are all uh, either closing up shop or in some case, in some ways, scaling back a little bit, which creates opportunity for me. And then do I have the skill set, the assets, the network to fill in that void? How can I fill in that void? So it's, it's, right. to me, it's, it's opportunity is what, what I see. Yeah, there's always, uh, while this stuff is happening, there's an opportunity for businesses to reinvent and, and shift gears. I remember telling um, a local business here uh, in the winter of 2018 to shift gears into uh, what they offer. And, and um, without getting into the specifics, the what the business sells is not something that's readily uh, going to be a demand thing. It's, it's What they sell is, a preference thing. I like what you offer versus the other seven to eight companies I found that offer it. But mm -hmm. what I asked them to do was be specific and make a shift into selling certain things that can augment into stuff that maybe counties purchases, maybe cities yep. or, or government or, or even private sector. Now I had this conversation in December of 2018 and I said, you should start making uniforms and protective gear. Yeah. We can buy uniforms for various needs for the hospitals. Uh, the protective gear can be purchased, uh, you know, vary for various needs. And this was, you know, in, in, in the fall of, of, of 20, and uh, excuse me, the winter of 2018 that I said, so had this business after that conversation maybe augmented they would would be in in high demand right now to sell yeah. uh protective uh i mentioned specifically hospital garments you know the, the everything down to the the crocs that people mm -hmm. wear on their feet those types of yeah. things for, for people to have to be on their feet for long periods of time mm -hmm. and i asked this business to look at their model and make some shifts based on stuff that you know mm -hmm. there's a demand for because you can sell the government, you can sell the private sector, you can sell the hospitals. Mm -hmm. This is something you could go to Rutgers, Robert, or RWJ, and, and say, hey, we offer these items. We're a local small business, and we are letting you know that we offer these items. Exactly. Yeah, so, so the yeah, yeah. Are, yeah, so, no, to definitely augment. Yeah, yeah the, the world is always speaking to us. We got to listen. And those that listen more carefully than, than, than talk more are the ones that have seen more opportunities. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, yeah so yeah, I see lots of opportunities. So you know, if you guys want to talk about strategy, you want to talk to us individually, you know, reach out to any any three of us, and uh, we'll see if what you have, if that uh, that um, pool of assets and skills that you have can fill in one of these gaps or any other gap that you guys uh, we can identify. Absolutely. I, don't, really? I honestly don't think that this is just a full list because it, it's oh, not only not. big brands, you know, no, no, yeah. uh, they're, they're smaller mid-sized companies that yeah. were probably taking a hold of a certain market. And yeah. now you have the opportunity to, yeah. to grow into that market, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Close right. to where I live. I look at, I see Gold's Gym. Close to where I live, there's a bunch of gyms that still uh, weren't open to, uh, weren't open at all. And then now they're open to limited capacity. So what's happening is I see a, uh, a huge influx at the parks where the trainers and sometimes the gym is meeting their people at the parks and they're doing yes. their workout sessions at the park. Why? Yes. Because they're, they're identifying the, uh, the need and then they're filling the gap. That's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is, um, this is a huge one. So this is, uh, this is a big one. And Jermaine could uh, talk way more about this than, uh, than Christian or I could. Um, okay. But there is going to be now a little bit of a shakeup on, uh, on who qualifies for a small business. I'm sorry, for a women business enterprise certificate, according to the SBA. And it's because people have been taking advantage of the system. Uh, and there's a, uh, a hard deadline you see here in the article uh, of October 15th. So uh, Jermaine, w what does this mean and, and, and why is this happening? Well, what happens is, and, and you know, I want to outline line this uh, in a certain way. Okay. When, when businesses uh, go for WBE and uh, minority business uh, certification, that's a little bit more stringent. And it seems like they're taking the approach to, to go the more stringent route uh, in regards to how they used to do the process, which kind of, uh, of outlines as a self, self uh, authent, authent, you know, uh, authenticating you know, type of thing where they say, uh, you know, you go into and you say, yeah, I, 
this is a WB and you put some database uh, information in there and it's recorded. Now it seems like they're going to be shifting to go along the lines of, of some of the more stringent, it's definitely on the federal side, is stringent, uh, you know, agencies that for, fall under federal guidelines like uh, transit port authority for certifications, uh, you know, DOT, uh, it's very stringent. And it looks like they're going to follow that versus the outline of, you know, again, self uh, authenticating and putting the information in there and saying, well, we are in fact this without um, a stringent follow up being done to make sure that the business actually falls in that category. And unfortunately, on a, the MBE and WBE side, that is the channel where uh, most of the white collar crime happens for certification because there's a cost benefit analysis done to say, well, if we try to make this a WBE and we get caught, what happens? Mm -hmm. So one of the examples that I could give you, unfortunately, uh, but something that's relevant from probably the last few years is the World Trade Center project. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people that were yeah. like, well, what, what's the delay? Well, I mean, well, why does it seem like it's taking so long? But what they didn't look at was the fact that there was alleged fraud to almost maybe 600 million, I think the number was. Wow. For women and minority business on a project. So now you're talking about stopping construction in, in some respects. Yeah. Um, and having to do re-auditing and you have to take the firm off the project, you have to vet new firms, bring them in, and it's a whole process. So while you're looking at the, the technical part in terms of the construction, you say, well, what's, but these things were happening behind the scenes, unfortunately, and, um, you know, the number that they recorded was somewhere around 600 million, which could have probably actually been higher you know there could have been a firm or two that actually slipped through the crack but on that side of the fence um yeah we, the certification has to be more stringent so I, i'm actually glad that uh the wbe side is is gonna be uh, a little bit more looked yeah. at um and, and it just helps out you know and it helps the businesses that really do exactly and that that's because yeah. that's what gets hurt the businesses that could have got the work exactly uh, exactly that, that were really in in the mix and should have gotten an opportunity that that didn't get it, they yeah. were the ones that got hurt. And you know, at the tune of that type of money, that could have shut somebody's doors. Yeah, by not I've seen it definitely it. On, on my side. Uh, you know, I, I'll never mention any names, but uh, companies that uh, will say, "Oh, you know, my, my wife owns the company. Let me just sell it over to my wife so I can get WBE and get this contract." Meanwhile, you know, she doesn't do the work, and. In the meantime, there's another company that really is owned by a woman that does that would have a good uh, um, you know, chance of getting that contract, but yeah, because right. the economies of scale are in favor of the traditionally man owned business that just for you know certification purposes shifted over equity to his wife so he can qualify for this, are yeah. now overshadowing the uh, you know the, the the real business that could have gotten the contract. Yeah, and yeah. we so have no, I'm, I'm happy. women businesses out here. Uh, that yeah, there's a lot. There's tons of, of fantastic women businesses yeah. in the area alone. Uh, yeah. You know some of them. I know some of them. Uh, so that hurts them along the way uh, when these opportunities are not yeah. to to go to the to the rightful party, if, if I could articulate it that way. That exactly, that should exactly. Be the opportunity. So, yeah. so I'm, I think I'm this is happy. Yeah, I think this is a good segue to lead in how to do this the right way, and uh, you know all the different parts of that Swiss Army knife. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I should have, that should have been the uh, title. <laughs> Swiss Army Knife of Hudson yeah. County. All, All right. right. So I'll, for I'll the main topic. All right. So, uh, Jimmy, we just started off with, with a question that, that I don't know if it's going to be covered. There's a couple of questions. I'm sorry, okay. a little bit noise, but there's a couple of questions that are coming in already. Um, okay. I think one of them we're definitely going to cover in a little bit. So I'll, I'll let you get to that one naturally. But the first one, um, can a sole proprietorship become certified? Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's Actually, just a choice on, on how you want to outline your business. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, so we're going to go now into the nitty gritty of uh, what are the advantages? Why should I get certification? You know, and I, well, I think. What are um, the certifications? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, let's start off with that. Yeah. What are the certifications? Well, listen, there's many, right? But what happens okay. is but this process, this process is, is very confusing, all right? Uh, fortunately here, our collective leadership uh, imposed policy 
to help mm -hmm. in each area. So we, we in two, 2017, uh, we have policy outlining that we, we want to have efforts go towards minority women, veteran, and small business okay. uh, to with more contracting opportunities. And they have the same outline in Bergen, uh, you know, our fellow counties in Bergen, okay. and uh, Essex, and uh, Middlesex, and Mercer, they have similar process. So we're, we're all in this web of, of the same types of policy and helping the same types of businesses. So for us, we have to have businesses that have been verified as minority women, veteran, or small business to participate in, in the outlines and the contract opportunities that uh, could take place. But those are the different uh, certifications that you see that have been historic. Uh, you do see uh, agencies that now, uh, mostly on a private side, not so much on a government side, but they do perform certification for LGBTQ uh, and this is more recent. So uh, there's different certifications and there's a merit of agencies. And this is where for hmm. the average business owner, they say, where do I start? Who do I talk to? It's enough uh, to overwhelm the average small business. Perfect example, just in this area, you have the Port Authority that does certification. You have New Jersey Transit that does certification. You have the SBA that does certification. You have the state of New Jersey Department of Treasury that does certification. Does that mean I have to get certified with all of them? You have New York City that does certification. You have Empire State that does certification. Hmm. You have the Minority Supplier Council of New York and New Jersey that does certification for the NMSDC network. You have the Women's President's Educational Organization in New York that does Women's Business Enterprise certification. I could keep doing this, but the whole point is for the average business that's saying, well, where do I start? Yeah. They need guidance. You know, uh, that's one of the main cogs of our office, you know, to offer guidance and, and help you get in the web to find a contracting and drill down who it is that you beyond, uh, obviously us here at the County, who is it that you're trying to do business with and what you need to do business with them? If you're soliciting a supplier diversity opportunity, with PSEG, they may want you to be certified by the Women's Business Council or the Minority Supplier Council because they're paying participants of that nonprofit network and that corporate network. So uh, helping navigate these waters is, is critical. Uh, businesses look at all of this information and they get completely overwhelmed, which is why we're here to help navigate through that process. So but then by, by talking to you, I guess I can then identify which of those agencies it's best for me to start off uh, certifying with because right. I guess my, okay. So with us, mm -hmm. a local business, you know, comes in uh, for some of the, and, and I want to say this too, for some of the other certifications, businesses aren't ready for those because they're uh, a little bit more stringent and they, they call for you to have additional uh, qualifications. Okay. Uh, be in business for a certain amount of time. So I definitely want to be clear about that. But we always look to the state of New Jersey, uh, Department of Treasury certification. A business in New Jersey should be looking to get certified by the state of New Jersey. Okay. So uh, the state of New Jersey Department of uh, Treasury certification is one of the primary certifications we discuss. And with the county, uh, we accept the certifications from the Port Authority, New Jersey Transit, the Department of Transportation, of course, um, you know, the SBA uh, veteran certification, of course, uh, you know, the State Department, we, we accept those certifications primarily. So we're looking to see what businesses fit into those certification uh, outlines and, and where they should go. You know, mm. an level business, uh, for example, shouldn't be applying to maybe the Port Authority of New Jersey Transit. So these right. are the types of discussions that we're having about where business is starting and where yeah. they try to go and how we can connect the dots with them. Okay. And then I guess in, in the lines of, um, of, of starting out, uh, I'm trying to identify where my customer is, you know, um, and I guess it feeds into some of the questions that we're, that we're getting here because, you know, it's quite a few. Um, I, I have here, you know, three companies. One is a cleaning company, the other one is a consulting company, the other one's a physical therapist that are leaving questions. You know, right. uh, how do I know if, if another entity is interested in buying my services? Well, and how do I find out if, there, if there's opportunities available for me? Is there a portal I can go to to see what, you know, what jobs are there? Well, here's the thing. Okay. And I want to make sure this is clear. And that's why I gave, I was specific to say all of those agencies to, to say what I'm about to say. There okay. is 
no one-stop shopping for any of this stuff that you're trying to do. And I want to make that clear to small businesses. Our conversation is about where you are, where you want to go, who specifically you're looking to connect with, and how you get into the web of prospecting. If you're looking to be, to, to be in a mix with the respective counties that have set-asides, you have to be registered with each county. You have to be registered registered in Essex County. You have to be registered in Bergen, Mercer, Middlesex, and Hudson County to find out respectively what our offerings are and what might be applicable to your business. There's no one-stop shopping. So uh, the these Port Authority uh, certification information and other stuff is going to allow you to find out what they have going on on their side of the fence. Being in our certificate, uh, excuse me, in our purchasing portal is going to allow for you to find out what opportunities are coming out of Hudson County. The same for Bergen, Essex, Middlesex, Mercer, uh, having your business registered with the state, et cetera. That's why the conversation starts with where you are, who you're looking to connect with to do business with, and what do you have to do requirement wise to be applicable for those particular opportunities that might come out. So for us, again, we require you to be certified if this is going to be something that we're uh, doing on our inclusive diversity side. And we need to, to have that you're verified by one of the agencies that I mentioned earlier, which is, is critical. What happens is businesses start prospecting uh, without doing some background search on who it is that they're trying to target. And they actually do get in a web and they'll find out they have to go back and do all of this other stuff. And then what they've in effect done is, is put themselves towards the back of the line because mm -hmm. uh, if you're soliciting, let's say PSEG, they're at, at least expecting that, you know, you know they buy what it is that you sell and that mm -hmm. you have to be certified by either the Minority Supplier Council who they're paying participants of or the Women's Business Council or at minimum that you can present to them that the state of New Jersey has verified you. So this the conversations to, to connect these dots are, are critical and they form what's going to be next. I'm thinking, so in, in, in starting, uh, I'm just thinking the mindset of a, uh, someone who's getting into the certification world for the first time. And there's just basic questions, you know, that I, that I've been, that I've seen luckily, um, for, for the past couple of years. Uh, and, and the questions are usually always the same, you know, do I have an advantage also of, getting multiple certificates, you know, because I'm minority, I am, you know, woman, I am. Um, so do I stack up yeah. as many certifications as I can to try and collect them? Yeah, listen, I always tell okay. businesses, get every certification that you're applicable for because it makes sense, right? Okay. We're creating opportunities for set aside. Let's say it's a woman uh, opportunity and you happen to be a woman business that didn't get certified. Well, I, I can't verify that you're a woman business, right? Okay. So this opportunity comes up and you say, hey, well, we're, we're WB2. And I said, well, I only have you certified as minority in small business. Okay. I have a designation for you for women business, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, in effect, leaving yourself out of possible opportunities yeah. by not having a designation that could be applicable towards your company. Got so it, if you are it. a WBE, I tell certain businesses, get every certification. Most certifications don't cost a lot of money. And most of them are, uh, you know, when you start talking about like the Port Authority and other agents, they actually don't cost any money. Mm -hmm. The state of New Jersey Department of Treasury, at, as it stands, is $100. Mm -hmm. uh, only on a private sector side, you know, you start spending a little bit more money. And that's why um, those conversations are really about who it is that you're trying to target in that network, because now you got to do a cost benefit analysis to say, hmm. I'm going to get certified by the Minority Supplier Council, the Women Business Council, but mm -hmm. it's going to cost me a few hundred bucks. So mm -hmm. who am I trying to target it in, in a, a cost-benefit analysis window? Is what I'm about to spend worth it to get into this lane of prospecting? Yeah. And so, that's, again, that's the benefit of having that initial conversation with you. Uh, can you guys, uh, I don't want to put uh, Jermaine your contact information. So, because uh, I know we, we've caught a lot of people's attention and the, the next step is going to be, uh, they're trying to get a hold of somebody at your office so that they can have that first consultation. You know, because you know, I'm listening to this and I'm like, all right, well, where do I start? How do I know which one, which is the right one for me? Uh, another common question that we're getting a lot too is, do these certifications help me when I go after a private contract, or is this just government stuff? So again, it's about 
whose certification you have and, and okay. which one you're going to accept. So okay. uh, an, 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 an entity like PSEG, because they do some stuff uh, that might call for government spend to be included, could, you know, they would look at your state of New Jersey certification. Okay. Because let's say they're working on a project and there's uh, state dollars in, involved in it. Okay. And you're going to become a contractor and, and be involved. They could look at your state of New Jersey uh, uh, Department of Treasury certification and be fine with it. So if, if, a, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's a private company that's not getting state dollars, are there any incentives for them to consider anybody who holds any certification? If it's you know, say the last I, part again. Yeah, so if I, uh, if I have a private company, I am a, I'm a decent sized manufacturer in the area and I own the company outright and I'm looking right. for somebody to come and do my floors. Um, and I see that there is a vendor that has two or three certifications. Do I have any incentives to hire that vendor uh, even though I'm not receiving any government dollars for a project? It's just my own floors inside my own uh, building. Well, listen, you, you could, right? Um, yeah. it, you know, there's a lot of, I'll give it to you this way. So I'll use an, I'll use an example uh, that I often use, which is a, a $10 billion plus company right here in New Jersey, which is right. FBI, Software House International. Okay. And I'm always baffled when I bring them up that a lot of people are like, who? And Rutgers Stadium is actually named after SHI. And it's uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, MWBE uh, IT uh, related company in the world. They do probably 10 to 15 billion and it's right mm -hmm. here in New Jersey. And the company is large enough to have their own so internal supplier diversity mechanism in-house. You could readily go to their website and look at what they offer for diversity and register with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of private companies that are fortunately uh, jumping in this arena to to connect with these smaller businesses and, okay. and um, either mentor them or, or connect with them. Uh, even us here at the county, you know, uh, Software House does stuff for the county and we were able to connect with another SBE that does some stuff for the county because they were connected to SHI. Wow. So um, it, it will vary depending on the company and what their personal mission is, but a lot of companies uh, we have a lot of outstanding uh, companies that are uh, minority women businesses, especially that are looking to help and connect with other minority businesses that once were where they are, uh, where they were, excuse me, to help bring them forward. Uh, I just wanted to use that one uh, company as an example. Let's talk to you. Yeah. Christian, you had a question? I, have, I have a question. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so can... In, is there any portal where you can find private company opportunities? Oh, that's a good question, yeah. For private company opportunities, if someone is a minority woman business, I really would suggest getting certified with the Minority Supplier Council and getting certified uh, with the Women Business Enterprise Council, uh, National Council, excuse me, because that is who the private sector goes to to look for their MWBEs. <clears throat> and also allows you the expressway mm -hmm. to get into their purchasing portals and connect with their diversity uh, managers and their, their diversity and inclusion people directly. Because you have been verified already, you also get a list of every organization that is a member participant once you clear certification. Oh, that's which is powerful to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's invaluable because you get a contact uh, for every diversity and inclusion professional of every major corporation in the U.S. Wow. Once you go through being certified, any corporation that's in their network from the banks to, uh, you know, anybody you can think of, whether it's PSCG, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Novartis, you know, that's how you find out who Sherry Shafer is from Novartis. Yeah. You know, that's how you find out who is at, um, you know, PSCG. And that's how you find out uh, Beth Canning is, is over in North. That, this is exactly how you find out that specific information. And it's also the expressway to connect you. See, what happens is on the private side, 
they are not doing the vetting and research to find out if you fall into these categories. They're already member participants of the two uh, agencies I mentioned, which is the Minority Supplier Council and the Women's Business Enterprise Council to help find MBEs and WBEs. So if, if a business cost benefit analysis wise can't afford to participate and go through certification, and I'm saying it this way because there's a scale they use to determine how they're going to charge a business. So an entry level business will of course be charged the minimum of whatever it is they charge to go through the process, but there is some cost. Don't hold me to the number. It could be somewhere as low as $300 as last I remember. Um, hopefully they're augmenting to help some more of these minority women businesses that are, uh, you know, going through some trying times to, to try to get some contracting opportunities. Hopefully they're charging them less money. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that is the direct way to, to connect as a MWBE with corporate America, private sector business. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't want to leave out okay. other, other businesses that are MWBE, like a Software House International. Software House is still certified as a minority woman business at $10 billion. So I want to be in that pool of people to understand uh, business-wise what they're doing and how it could impact me as somebody that could connect with them or another larger minority or woman business in the network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's important to know too, because a lot of certifications do have their own requirements, you know, which would be uh, income uh, revenue wise or uh, length of time that they've been operating. And it's very unique to each one. And a lot of us will dismiss it and saying, oh, that I don't qualify for that because of X, Y, Z reason without really doing the research. And I think uh, you'll be surprised you know, how much money you could actually make before you're still considered a small business or why you're still considered a small business. Right. Um, dude, and, um, and for the benefit of everybody, and by the way, uh, Jermaine, I think a little fun fact, I think you have the record of the most questions asked so far. Yeah, yeah right. this, is a very, this is a very hot topic. Yeah. So you, right. I'm, I'm trying to do my best at looking at the questions and trying to weed them into my questions too. So it's good, okay. it's good stuff, it's good stuff. I, think I, I saw one of them that asked me to say the agency slower. Yeah, yeah. So here, for, for, for MBE, for Minority Business Enterprise, okay. the New York, New Jersey, it's a mouthful, but I'm going to say the whole title, the <laughs> New, York, New Jersey Minority Supplier Development Council, Inc., or MSDC, New York, New Jersey, MSDC. Right. And for full disclosure, I used to work for New York, New Jersey, MSDC for about six years. Okay. Uh, on the woman's side, for WBE, you have WPEO New York, the Women's President, excuse me, Women's President's Educational Organization of New York. Now, they are the uh, strategic partner with the Women's Business Enterprise National Council okay. to do local WBE certification. This is both private sector side. So if you want to know what the... Uh, the corporate sector certificate, uh, you know, those are the mm -hmm. go-to certifications and that's how they find their suppliers. And that's how you as a business connect with those major corporations. I don't care who it is. It, it could be major league baseball. They're a corporate member, bank of America, uh, Novartis, uh, PSEG, blue cross, blue shield, you know, even some of us as, as agencies and strategic partners are actually considered members. This office is a member of the council network. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I yeah. definitely want to revisit that uh, the, the finance part that you just mentioned there about financing. You know, we're going to go back to that in, in a minute. But there's another question that I think while we're on the topic of certifications and then some of the characteristics of that certification, you know, qualifying wise and, and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. Companies grow and evolve. You know, so as my company grows, uh, you know, what made me qualify last year might not make me qualify this year. So how long do these certifications last, you know, and how often do I have to renew them if I have to renew them? So some certifications, it depends on the agency. So okay. if you say you get certified by the state, the state certification is good for three years. They may ask you for some annual update information, of course. Okay. Uh, definitely on the private sector side, they ask you for uh, annual update information. Um, the same thing with agencies like the port and, and you know transit 
there's information that you have to provide to them uh, that keeps, you know, close track of your standing. Because like you said, businesses change and businesses change a lot of times by nature of doing business. Yeah. Somebody might want to invest in your company or buy some shares, which yeah. changes the outline of your company legally. Mm -hmm. So now you have to get into the other areas of certification, which uh, I'll just jump into now in case you know, any questions comes up about that. But okay. certification, when it's especially on a uh, specifically when it's minority woman certification, even veteran, but uh, they have different ma mannerisms to verify veteran because, of course, it's it's a uh, point about your your status and, um, you know, uh, for, is either, you know, veteran business or, or service disabled veteran business. You can have a business be a veteran business by how many veterans they employ, which some people don't know. So you, I might not be a veteran business at all by way of the business outline and structure of my company. But if I hire a certain percentage of veterans and put them to work, I can qualify as a veteran certified entity because I'm employing and putting veterans to work. All right. But on the minority woman side, it's very stringent. And again, unfortunately, this is where the fraud mechanisms are tested. It's about who owns, operates and controls the business. I'll say that again. Minority woman business certification is yep. focused on does the woman or minority entity own, operate and control the business? Exactly. I'll give you an example. Trucking company. You can own it. You can say, well, you know, Chris can say, I own this trucking company. It's mine, Jermaine. I, I, you know, I don't understand. Uh, you know, I'm trying to go through the certification process and, you know, they, they're not allowing me. You could very well legally own a company, right? But as an auditor, and I'll give you the reverse view as an auditor, because I used to be an auditor. I'm looking at your file and I, I don't see anything about trucking experience. I don't see that you ever worked to UPS or that uh, you worked for one of the local companies, let's say over here in Kearney, New Jersey, and that you ever drove a rig and that you don't have a CDL. So now I'm, I'm looking and I'm saying, you do own a company, but every time you have to do a job, you have to outsource that job. And if that's the factor, okay, control and operating could be out of the window because if the company that you usually contract tells you, no, you can't, they can't do it that day. Well, then how are you going to do it? You're at the mercy of somebody else to run your company. They can, you can say, Hey, I, I want, you know, I need to get this done uh, today at two o'clock. And they might say, mm, we can't do it. We could do it more like five, but you already, already promised that your customer that you would try for two o'clock. Now, if you have a CDL and a and, uh, commercial driver's license, excuse me, let, let me not talk out of you know, range. Uh, if you have a commercial driver's license and you can say, I, Chris, can jump in the rig if I can't get the other participants that I usually contract this out to or whoever it is that I usually bring in to do the job as an independent. If worse comes to worse, based on my background and my experiences on my resume, and the fact that I have a commercial driver's, if I have to jump in the rig and do it myself, it'll still get done. Right. Or right. That's the difference. And a lot of, of times businesses are looking at the legal standard uh, setup of, I have a 5149. Well, it's a 51% owned by a woman. Well, does the woman own and control yeah. the business? Yeah, I've, the I've heard of yeah relying on anybody else to run the business. These are the factors. Yeah. It's the yeah, minority I've heard, same, same guidelines. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I was say, I've heard uh, a couple of horror stories of uh, when they get, when they do get audited after you get your certification and yeah. uh, they interview, you know, the person that is, uh, I guess, um, warranting that certification, you know, a minority or women, um, and they're not involved in the control or the operations of the company. You know, it, it's their slap, you know, their, their hands get slapped, you know, they you know, they get fines, you know, they, they lose the certification. So uh, I, I've, I've seen it firsthand, you know, so yeah. that also raises me, uh, raises another question, something similar to a question that somebody posted. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll present the scenario, then you tell me what your thoughts are. You know, um, I'm trying to get the contract, but I don't qualify for any of these certificates, but Chris does. So I asked Chris, hey, can you go in on this deal with me 
so that your certification can help me get the contract, but I'm going to do the work and I'll give you the money. Yeah. I mean, those are all certification related issues. Um, that's why along with certification, um, especially on the construction side, you see what we call contract compliance. Uh, there's subsequent field visits to make sure that the people that are actually doing the work are the people that were outlined to do the work. Um, you know, you have to turn in certified payrolls and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a whole different mechanism. And this is how people, you know, unfortunately get caught up. But there are measures in place because um, this is known as, as what we call uh, body shopping. Like, you know, you're making it look like the yep. car like this and it runs like this, but there's really something else kind of going on. So there are measures in place. And, and again, I hated to use uh, that example, but the, the World Trade Center project, this is how mm -hmm. things started to crumble because the, the minority company was mm -hmm. under question and the woman company was under question. And it was like, mm -hmm. hmm, how did they get in the lane to, to, to make yeah. this type of money? And then yeah. other things start to, to uh, present themselves. You know, and the, the other thing that's, um, I don't want to discredit, right? All the way back to, let's say, uh, a grade school level type of thing. You're in class, you know that somebody is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, right? You're sitting there, you you know it, right? So these other businesses, they know uh, who's kind of in their backyard. They know, you know, it's the same way when construction is happening, the unions and other people, they know who's supposed to be on those sites and who's not yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. So, um, you know, those types of things come up and that's why we have, uh, you know, compliance, uh, outreach people and, you know, people that do follow up on certifications, mm -hmm. the agencies talk, you know, uh, yeah. I, I worked for certain agencies or, you know, prior to my arrival to the county, I was at the Tappan Zee Bridge on the new project and I called up some of my counterparts at, at other places and say, hey, you know, I was just at company ABC you might want to double back and take a look. So these conversations are definitely happening, again, to avoid those types of things because they hurt the businesses that should be in a mix for the opportunities. Yeah. And we always want to protect that intent. I, I want to go through the questions. I want to make sure that nobody gets ignored, uh, and that there's any, there might be some good questions here that uh, you know, I, I was paying attention to what you were saying, so I wasn't constantly reading everything. Uh, but the last one I think is a good question. You know, there are some, uh, certifications that are not very regional, you know, like, uh, you know, or they can bid on larger jobs like the 8A. Uh, but the last question here, certifications issued uh, by the state of New Jersey, are they valid in opportunities with uh, counties statewide? So, so again, for us here at, the, at Hudson County, I don't want to um, outwardly speak for the other counties. Uh, I, they kind of mirror, uh, you know, we, we kind of mirror each other in terms of process okay. uh, with some variance, but definitely here in Hudson County, if you're certified by the state of New Jersey Department of Treasury, that's fine with us. If you're certified by the Port Authority, the SBA, uh, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, transit, you know, DOT related certification, that is fine with us. A government agency has verified that you are either woman, minority, veteran, uh, you know, small business or, or disadvantaged, which covers uh, some of the outline from uh, under federal guidelines for minority and women, especially. So any of those agencies are fine uh, for the county of Hudson. I know uh, Dr. Joby from, I believe from Essex is in here. So he might yep. want to type in, he might mm -hmm. want to type in who Essex accepts. I'm, I'm certain that Essex is one of the counties that accepts the state and Bergen, I, I would dare say they all, all of the counties that have set aside, except at, at minimum, we all agree that we accept the state of New Jersey Department of Treasury uh, certification. And you know, we reach out to John Cronin there uh, yep. Yep. about our concerns with, the, with that stuff. And, and John's, you guys know John, he's a great participator yep, yep, yep. and a great person to call, uh, call to, so. So, uh, and uh, something, something I want to, to, to mention, uh, we don't need to have a certification to access the county portal, right? No, any business can register in a county. The purchasing portal uh, is in fact a purchasing portal. So you can know about uh, opportunities. 
Okay. Uh, our purchasing portal, and I want to make sure I'm reading it off correctly so I don't mess it up. <laughs> w, www.hudsoncountynewjerseyprocure.org. Hudsoncountynewjerseyprocure.org. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you guys didn't type it in. Yeah. Hudson County, New Jersey, Procure dot org any business you let me emphasize you do not have to be certified to register your business in the county and so we know that your business is there and that you're on a radar to receive information about things that are happening what what happens is when we are looking at impact in the areas of minority women veteran and small business if we don't have you verified as certified by the one of the aforementioned agencies that i cover then mm -hmm. you cannot be included in some particular, um, you know, opportunities that are going to be directly for those categories. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to transfer uh, a certification from New York to New Jersey? Uh, you know, is there some, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a speed process to, uh, you know, to do this? So, no. So what happens is this. Um, there's no, uh, I, there's ways to fact track, to fast track, but it depends on who you're certified by. Okay. So let's say if you're certified by the Port Authority, you can remember, here's the, tr here's the, the trick with an agency like the Port Authority. They are a bi-state agency. They operate in New York and New Jersey. So if you're certified by the Port Authority, you can, uh, they actually ask you when you're going through the process if you want to also fast track for Empire State and for um, New York City which also has their own certification. Okay. So if you're certified by the Women's Business Council and, the, or, and or the Minority Supplier Council and you apply for uh, the state of New Jersey Department of Treasury, they will look at the fact that you've been verified already and you can apply through a fast track uh, procedure, proving, showing them that you have been certified already. And if you if you happen to be certified by the port or, or one of you know one of the other gov government agencies, you definitely can present to the state. Look, we've, in effect, gone through federal process, and now we're applying for state. Got it. Most times it's the other way around. People start yeah, to yeah. and work their way up. But yeah, I work. You know, people don't know. Yeah, yeah, I work on a fast track application once, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Christian, are there any questions that we missed that uh, that uh, we should address? Let's see. Let's see. Let's There's a lot of questions. We appreciate all your questions. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that this is a very um, interactive crowd today. So, you know, there's a question here by, uh, by someone that it reminds me of a story I heard you, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine say in the past. Uh, but yeah, I'll read the question. It says, I used to have a contract with Johnson & Johnson, for example, uh, uh, by their request. Uh, they had me set up as a women-owned business. Uh, I did not pay for anything since uh, they were my corporate sponsor. Is there anything similar to this? Because I guess they were contacted by Johnson & Johnson. I remember you telling me once that you were also proactive and that you uh, went out and searched for uh, vendors that, that, that had a, uh, a product that they can sell. Mm -hmm. um, so there, I think there's two parts of that question. One is you know, the proactiveness of the organization. And the second part is a, uh, a sponsorship or you know, any agency that do reimburse you for costs for a certification. Well, um, I don't want to jump ahead, but I'm definitely working with uh, internal leadership here to see, uh, especially at, at this point, um, what we could do to, to pitch in to help businesses. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to put that stuff on the table yet. I can tell okay. you definitely, I can tell you my counterparts in Bergen uh, do, all, and, and excuse me, let me correct myself, Essex also uh, provides reimbursement for yeah. certification. So if you go for certification with the state, of New Jersey, and uh, you are going to be paying for it, they can reimburse you for that certification. But you have to make sure you're contacting and working with those respective offices and be on their radar. But yes, that's, that's one of the items that's being afforded, and, and hopefully it will be something that will be implemented here. I'm definitely pulling for it uh, as well, because again, as I stated at the beginning, businesses need every advantage they can get, yeah. even if it's yeah. get the dollars back or whatever cost that can be afforded to them. So I definitely want to see that here as well as our counterparts have it. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Christian, any, anything that we missed that we should touch on? We, 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 we have a couple questions that came in, but we're a little tight on time. There's yeah, we are. Left. Okay. 
Um, so what I'd love for you to do, Jermaine, if you could drop your uh, contact information into the chat, um, okay. you know, email, phone number, whatever you want. Uh, so, so everyone could, you know, contact you for these specific questions. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're also sending via email. So either or. Okay. Um, but yeah. Listen, you, anybody can, you can, uh, look at more about us on hcobo.com. Um, that'll give you basic information about the office. You'll also be able to see uh, some information of people that have interacted with our office, whether they got certified or we helped them mm -hmm. get a contract. Um, you can definitely, my information, I'm, my name is Jermaine Parms. Uh, it can be reached at J-P-H-A-R-M-E-S at H-C-N-J dot U-S. Uh, the number to the office is 201 395 6267. That was 6267? Yep. I'm three, typing three, it into six, the chat. 201 395 Got it. Yep. And yeah, there were, there were some questions that we didn't get to, unfortunately, just because of time. I, I, like I told you, Jermaine, you've been the most popular guest with questions. <laughs> you know, this, this area yeah. um, is a great area for a lot of businesses. What we want to do is just kind of take the, um, I guess for better articulation, the, the boogeyman out of, uh, of, of businesses that are scared yeah. to do. And, you know, we have a discussion at, at this office mm -hmm. about the certification at a very granular level where it, you will look at the entire process completely different and be more of a willing participant to actually go through with it. But is it, there's so many businesses that don't go through the process and they don't understand that they're missing uh, potential opportunities. They're not getting phone calls. There are things that are happening uh, here in, in Hudson County. We have the new courthouse project coming. Uh, we went through an exhaustive search looking for MWBEs, yeah. uh, veteran businesses, small businesses. We were calling all our strategic partners. Uh, we called the chambers. Anybody that can, you know, tell us where businesses are. There are a lot of things of impact that are happening, and uh, hopefully there are more uh, coming down the pike uh, that will help these businesses be more sustainable, especially in our current circumstances. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to just encourage these businesses to keep doing the things that you need to do to be in the mix. Um, connect with offices like ours. Connect with our um, you know fellow offices in the other counties. Connect with the SBDC. Uh, connect with your economic development uh, parties, your chambers that were are putting out you know a lot of information. Um, connect with all of these uh, individuals, you know, the New Jersey Association of Women Business Owners. There's so many different resources yeah. out there. Kearney Point, a fantastic hub yeah. uh, for businesses in Hudson County owned by a woman. You know, so there's all of these different vehicles, the schools, you know, the uh, NCACU, St. Peter's, Ignite Institute, you know, we have all of these different uh, arenas Just out you. there. Huh? As the NJCU. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so said, yeah. You know, and then I said St. Peter's Ignite Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Community College. But, um, you know, there's so much talent and, and uh, mm -hmm. willing participants around here that are willing to help businesses. And, um, you know, please take advantage of all of the resources and connect the dots to all of the people that are in this web that, you know, we're helping the same uh, groups of individuals and always know that we're working together behind the scenes. Uh, we are yeah. talking, are working together. Yeah. I think that is something that people should know. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. 100%. Awesome. So 30 seconds to finish up with the uh, next two sections. Let's see. Yeah, uh, the, the tip or trick and the, uh, and the quote. Yeah, yeah. And, and guys, please don't fall off. We have a link at the end of this presentation that'll uh, keep you in the loop for uh, more Mindshare Monday-esque sort of um, mm -hmm. videos yep. that we're doing. Uh, but here, here you go. The, the tip or trick of the week is get a bank verification letter for line nine. So what, what was line nine, uh, Jermaine? <laughs> so so when, when you look at the application, especially the state application for MWBE, right? Uh, one of the things I tell people is don't be discouraged. These applications have to be one size fit all. Everything that they're asking may not be applicable to your business. Don't create something to try to make it applicable. Um, you know, it may ask you if you have partnership agreements or something like that. You don't need to go out and create one just to apply for certification. 
excuse me, in terms of line nine, one of the things that uh, they ask you for and, and other agencies are going to ask you for specifically is they're looking to si see, excuse me, who can sign uh, when it comes to the company's finances and, and uh, more in, importantly, the bank account. Who can go in this bank account and, and access money? And when, you know, just to give you the auditor's view, when an auditor is looking at this, this is something that may raise a red flag, but the long and the short is, if you go to your branch and tell them that you're going through auditing, you can get a letter and they can verify the information the state or most other people are asking you. Uh, instead of going through the long drawn out process of trying to produce items that might be on file, especially with uh, the new way banking is done. Most of it's done mobily. It's, it's yep. done on the internet, you know, most banks are, are slowly moving away from in-person customer service and even in-person customer services, they're just here to help you troubleshoot yeah. what you're doing on a computer. So um, with that being said, the shortcut is if you can get the bank to verify uh, via a letter, I'm Parms Associates, uh, you know, Parms Associates has a, a account with TD Bank, Jermaine Parms is the authorized signatory. You have in effect answered the question that they're asking you in section nine on the application because the auditor just needs to know who has access to the funds or who can maneuver you know yeah. business the money of the business awesome so that's a short awesome. <laughs> awesome awesome i appreciate that little awesome. tip yeah so yeah. let's get into the our, our quote of the week yeah so you guys could be uh well this one's not so much of an inspiring quote but it, it'll it'll make you think a little bit I, I look at it like inspirational because to me, it's almost like the glass half full, half empty. It doesn't okay. change. It depends on what perspective you want to see it at. You know, right, so right. most people look at unhappy customers like a problem. I look at unhappy customers as free market research, you know, and uh, it, it's an opportunity to shine. So when I have an unhappy customer, well, what did I do? Especially when it's out in a, on, a, on a public platform, like a comment on my page or in a Yelp review, I can, this is my opportunity to show the world how I address uh, problems. You know, how I address a, 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 a problematic, you know, situation, you know, do I point the fingers and say, no, 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 it was you, it's because you didn't understand me, or, or do I say, thank you for the feedback, you're right, I'm actually going to change it, I might even name the new product after you, I don't know, I'm just making something up, you know, to show that I'm really, really in, in touch with my, with, my, uh, with my audience. So, your audience is constant, in the world is constantly talking to you, you know, we have to be able to be willing to listen to it, you know, and this is exactly, you know, an example of that. Companies get shaped all the time because of customer feedback. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that's important. Um, like in my world, in the e-commerce world, um, the way that you develop a product um, is usually just you look at bad reviews uh, of, of that product that you're trying to develop and you build off of those bad reviews. If they yeah. complain about the packaging, then you fix the packaging, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's super simple stuff, but I think it's... Um, I shouldn't people get stressed out um, oh. that they shouldn't get stressed out over unhappy customers. You, you learn from it and um, people appreciate when you develop something because of oh, what they complained about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. But yeah. So again, mm -hmm. yep. unfortunately, this is our last Mindshare Monday. In this format. In, in this format. Yeah. 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 Um, we're continuing the value. We're going to continue this in another platform. So I want you guys to know that this link will no longer be live. Wherever you've been signing up for Mindshare Monday will not be the link. Um, what I would want you guys to do is sign up to this link, and I'm going to drop it into the chat. Mm -hmm. And it's to our newsletter. And in our newsletter, we're going to drop the information uh, for where you have to go. Uh, to sign up to this new platform. And it's gonna be the same uh, format. We're gonna have guests. We're gonna have a lot more uh, short clips of valuable information that we can yeah. give you um, and stuff like that. And it's gonna be on YouTube. So, so you can watch it whenever you want, you know, at your leisure in, in chunks and repeat it, rewatch it, you know, forward it, yep. smash that like button. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys, click, click that link there. Um, and we'd appreciate if you sign up to this newsletter so we could give you that information. 
And um, hey, if, if you subscribe to, to a random influencer, support your local SPDC. <laughs> yep. Right? Yep. And um, we're, we're just here to help. It's going to be free value. You know, YouTube is free. We're free. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Jermaine, right, you're free too. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're a hey, listen i you know people um of course post uh, i mean i mean previous to our current situation people usually they show up downstairs here or they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll right. get you know somebody that referred them and you guys notice uh as well i'll say sure let me talk to them are they available today or when yeah. can we talk uh almost immediately so uh yeah you know we're uh, a, a public as as public agencies get uh, yeah. you know, but we we have to meet the businesses where they are to to make sure that we can help them. So um, that's that's the name of the game for us. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. So, um, final thoughts, final words of wisdom. <laughs> you know, for me, no, and anybody, you know, uh, well, hustle hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, Pivot. listen. I know for me, you know, um, somebody asked me, uh, and it's almost a trick question in our client comment, well, okay. well, how are you doing, right? And I think a lot of us are dealing with a lot of the same circumstances uh, from COVID to either personally knowing people that were sick and unfortunately yeah. maybe losing people, and we're all trying to um, conduct business and, and do stuff and navigate in this. And, and they said, well, what's your view? And I said, it's almost like a tournament, if I could give it a sports analogy. They said, "What do you mean?" I said, so "Focus on surviving and advancing." Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, you know, one round, one round at a time, one inning at a time. Yep. That's it. Yeah. You know, focus. The focus is on survive. You know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, right? It would be the same thing for baseball. You got to win in the series to go to the next series. Yeah. If it's the NCAA tournament, you got to win a game to get to the next round. Yep. Uh, you know, I I gave it that view. So just focus on being who you have to be, surviving and, and moving forward. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. And thank you so, again. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, always, it's always great uh, working awesome. with you guys and, and we appreciate it as always. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jermaine. Uh, guys, click the link. If not, we'll drop it into the email later. Um, but thank you, everyone. We're, we are happy to serve you. Um, connect with us and um, sure. we'll see you on YouTube somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Thank you, everyone. Adios. All right. Thank you again. Thanks. All right. Bye. Be well.